Travis Kelsey. Now, if you don't remember, this was in the news today. For some reason, Kayla Michelle or Kayla Nicole is in the news. Still talking about her breakup from Travis Kelsey. Look at the news published. This is this morning. So people think that, that I'm pulling stuff off the internet. All right, that's old news. 325-24 at 6.58 a.m. You've suffered enough. Travis Kelsey's ex, Kayla Nicole, dishes relationship advice on how to handle a breakup. Now, let me just show you. She's being reported everywhere recently, right there, 17 hours, 17 hours ago. What to know about Kayla Nicole? So it says right here, you can see that for some reason she's trending. Maybe her publicist or something like that is going nuts so why is she trending well this is why travis kelsey it is no hold on for a second i got adverts that won't close what's going on with these okay i have to come back you should see this mess that i'm in right now all right there it is right there you can't see it on the screen travis kelsey allegedly spent more than half of his yearly salary on wooing Taylor Swift. Oh, my goodness. Can you woo, woo, woo? Can you woo, woo, woo? Yeah, can you woo, woo, woo? You should be mine, all mine. Now, there's several angles that I want to hit this from, and I know a lot of people are going to jump to conclusions, but you see the poll on your screen. Go ahead and enter your vote on what do you think of this move by Travis Kelsey? Considering the fact that half of his salary, just his playing salary, has been spent on wooing Taylor Swift. Now, he was the one that initiated this relationship, right? But it looks like we always say all men pay. He's getting it for free. The Chads get it for free. Those days are over. I've been telling you that these days are over. The dating marketplace is monetized. He saw her out. She took the bait. And the nanny goat's happy. New, 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 new world order. Which is the last one right here. The nanny goat is happy. This is to me an arranged relationship, but not arranged in a negative way. This is an arranged relationship that could benefit him long term. But nothing's for free. Even a woman that is as old as Turtle Swift, she's 34 years old. She's at the tail end of her fertility, right? And so she's like, I got to get serious and lock a guy down. But this could be somewhat predatory to him, and it could be an L later on if he does proceed to procreate and marry her. Now, people are saying that this is an investment by him and that he's going to come out, even with the prenup, he's going to come out richer, and that's a whole nother angle. There's a lot of angles to approach this from. But no man gets it for free. He had to pay even for Taylor Swift, who's a billionaire. He had to consider paying to court her, which is the payments that you all pay to date. When you're dating, you pay. Now, when I tell you not every woman is out of your league, they're just out of your price range, this is the story right here. When I tell you there's no woman out of your league, she's just out of your price range, even Travis Kelsey qualified for that statement. You see, you thought I was just going to say, he's a simp. Nope. I'm going to show you my talking points last. Now, let's just say you. Obviously, Obviously, I wouldn't get a chance at this, but if I if I was the right dude, yes, I would have got a chance at it. Now, the right dude was all in the NFL. She could have chose another one of these guys to do this for. She didn't. And he said, she said, okay, yeah, you want to date me, even though I'm a billionaire, I'm not going to do this and I'm gonna, not going to do that. You got to show that you're really interested. You can't just expect me because I'm a billionaire to make, spend my money on you. She doesn't have to invest her money into him. This is what a modern American woman are saying. I make $80,000 a year, but I'm not going to invest my money into you. So he still had to come to the table. He had to come to the table and he had to hit her with the mouthpiece. He had to hit her with the mouthpiece. Now, let's talk about this. You see the poll. It says they're going to create a super athlete. Obviously, you have two tall, uh, two tall human beings. They have a baby. I'm assuming that the baby's going to be tall. They have the funding to produce athletes or whatever. So this is eugenics arranged marriage that's when the marriage becomes arranged many wealthy people have arranged marriages many wealthy people have arranged marriages so you have to understand they took a whole bunch of things in consideration you had people that brought them together you had an interest over here you had a party over here she said i'm at the tail end of my fertility sure i'd like to have a couple babies now pop those out before i have to go to ivf then 
You had an interest over here. She took a look. She said, okay, he'll do. And that's you. All right, that, that guy's good. All right, he seems to be successful. He got his head on straight. He's somewhat good looking. He's tall. He's big. He's bah. And she said, okay, that'll fit. There was only a few human beings on earth that would have fit this profile. So they brought them together. This is kind of how it works. Now, for the people who want love, you have to understand that the higher upper echelon people, they're brought together like this. Social circle, status, and they have it measured. They do the background check. They do a blood test if they have, well, I can't say it. I'm not going to say what race, what people, we know I can't say right. that. So they do all of these things before they get together, but y'all trying to have a random chance at love. I broke this down last week. There's no random chance at love. People are dating wrong. You're trying to bring a stranger in here and hope, oh, maybe we'll have chemistry. This is a waste of your time. This is a waste of your time, especially if you're poor, broke, dusty, dirty, and lonely. Y'all can do whatever the hell y'all want. But the upper echelons, they bring themselves together through their social circle. They investigate each other. They court each other. They had a courting period and all of that stuff. And they come together and they plan their families. They plan their families. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll put your genes together. We'll do your blood type. We'll, okay, yep, and it'll be good. They plan it. And they get all the paperwork and uh, they do all this shit. All right, did you get the jab? Yep. Are you voting for Biden? Yep. And then they get all their shit together. They put it all together. They get the lawyer sign it. Boom, on a dotted line. All right, we know what we're risking. I'm going to give you 12 goats and two pigs, and he's going to give you a piece of parcel of land. Mm. <laughs> and boom. And boom. Kaboom. Then they have their relationship. So people are playing it's a psyops. Dude, they're going to have their babies. They're going to do all of that shit. They're going to have the wedding. It's going to be on live television and all of that shit. They're going to sell photos. That's how it works. That's how the um that's how the queen, that's how the queen and king of England got married. They're going to be America's couple. So whether it's a psyops or not is irrelevant. That shit going down. It's going down. And that's why they got Kayla McCole, McCole's ass out here. Now let's attack it from this end. Let's see, attack it from the Kayla Nicole uh, side. Okay. Kayla Nicole found out that bitch, a big booty and a smile ain't going to cut it. Mm. And Travis Kelsey said, nah, that ain't going to be enough for me. Yeah, you cute, but don't let that shit go to your head because what this won't, girl won't do, another one will. He was like, you know what? All these asses and booties are taking me nowhere. Sadly enough, this ninja would have been uh, muddled in mediocrity his entire life had he stayed with Kayla Nicole. Now, some of you guys have to make this decision. I know we want to be against Travis Kelsey on this one. I know we want to say the nanny goat, but I want you to think about this. Travis Kelsey said, I need to up my standards. Not in looks, but in quality of life. Let's take it from this angle. I want to up my standards. Okay, she cute, but what else does she add? Does she add value? He said, nope. This came cook clean. She a loud mouth. She out of line. She don't know her place. Yeah, she cute. Yeah, her thighs banging, but she going to limit me. And once I get her in here, she going to act like she own me. And guess what? I need to raise my standard. I need to raise my standard. It's not just about looks. It's about the quality and the adding of the value. And he said, nah, fuck that. Because he could have. He could have just settled. And allegedly, the same thing that she's doing for Taylor, she was doing for him. Allegedly, she was paying to trips to go to see Travis. She was paying her home, own way. So she was investing financially to get in with Travis so she can enter, get her claws into him and then and then get his NFL contract like these other hoes are doing. All right, I'm going to go get that child support and that NFL contract. So that investment for him, he was like, I'm not going to be another child support ninja. Okay? Because he could have done this. Okay? She, he could have done this and be like, oh, man, we in love. But he would have just he would have just floundered like this. Then the little bit of money he made would have went to child support. It would have went to a divorce because that's where it was going. And he was like, nah, because watch this. Unfortunately for NFL players, 
This consulting firm is making sure black athletes don't fall prey to the broke curse. Now, he says black athletes, and he's a, he's a guy right here. He's an attorney. His name is Eugene Parker. He, he counsels black athletes. But this data right here, this statistic, is the statistic I want you to take, take a look at. Sports Illustrated reported that 80% of retired NFL players go broke in their first three years out of the league. 80% of retired NFL players go broke in their first three years out of the league. Travis Kelsey said, not me. Nope. Travis Kelsey said, not me. He would have went broke if he would have went with Kayla, Kayla Nicole. Why? She don't have no value. Like, what does she do? She got a little yob. I know she got her a little yob on social media. But he was like, you know what? Not me. Fuck that. At the end of the day, I'll go ahead and invest. Year of my salary that would have went down the drain in child support to Kayla Nicole. I'll invest a year of my salary and kiss the nanny goat. New, 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 new world order. He said, fuck that. Why? For some ass and titties? No, thank you. I'll take no ass and no titties for 5000 Alex. Nope. Yeah. No ass and no titties. That's what he told. See, that's the idea that I keep telling you guys about. I'm like, dude, you talking about these girls and they ass and titties? Everybody, all women got ass and titties. Taylor Swift got half an ass and half a set of titties. That's good enough. Get your standards up. Stop thinking with your prick. Stop thinking because, oh, man, you know, she going to be down. <laughs> he said, ah. Now, to me, to me, this is wild. Half of your salary. But again, he's looking at it probably for a long term. Let me go ahead and read the article. Remember when reports came out that Taylor Swift was spending quite a bit of money to upgrade Travis Kelsey's wardrobe? Well, now sources say that Kelsey has also spent a lot of money on this romance, specifically around $8 million. Eight mil. Eight million. So somebody even said, well, he'll get $10 million in a prenup. I mean, I don't know where you guys are coming from with this shit, but maybe $100 million. Lifestyle and Mag claims that he claims, and remember, this is all alleged, claims that he spent more than his half of his $14 million salary on this romance with uh, the gifts and traveling expenses alone. It says Kelsey has a net worth of $50 million, but... A yearly salary is around $14 million. It is unclear if this has gone up in the past year. So what was the uh, alleged $8 million for in his and Swift's romance? Well, they're guessing here. We're just going to say this is alleged. Okay. Kelsey has had to make quite a few worldwide trips to see his girlfriend, which experts believe could it be at least, least $300,000. And the gifts also have been a huge chunk of money. Okay, I mean, dude, this all, for for us, it seems like it's simping, right? Because you're like, why would he do this for 34-year-old? But think think back. If he doesn't do this, and he doesn't kiss the nanny goat, and he doesn't take the Pfizer check, which is, I think, uh, his endorsements amounted to $4 million. And, of course, look, they got a, two dudes right here. $4 million. I tell you, man, the boy, I tell you, the propaganda is crazy. Uh, Travis's endorsements land $4 million after the Super Bowl. All right, there you go. $4 million. So $4 million. It's not 40. It's not $40 million. That's $4 million. Seems like a lot. Now, does he have to do this? No, but I'm just letting you know. I'm just, I'm just taking it from angles. We're just chopping it up. Chopping it up in pieces. It says, while it is unclear what he got for her, on her birthday, many believe he snagged her a custom-made opal ring, which, defini- uh, which definitely couldn't have been cheap. But for Valentine's Day, he allegedly spent thousands on an Hermes scarf, custom gold-matching TNT bracelets, a... What is this bag? Bottega? Bodega? What is a bodega bag? Mm. Bottega. A Bottega bag, a 24-karat gold rose sculpture, and more... Per uh, the uh, magazine. Along with that, he allegedly spent even more on gifts for Swift. Okay, more on gifts. So right here, he spared no expense for this love story. Sorry for the real. What is a potato bag? A potato bag or a podega? Potega. 
right there it is right there. oh is that the is that the uh, shannon sharp bag that's the shannon sharp bag mm. <laughs> all right so there it is right there he spared no expense so it, it is kind of where we're looking at it is is even though he she had money it was very clear and for the women here they're gonna be like you go boy he still had to woo her traditionally and to be fair to be fair what what did you think was going to happen? She liked him and she was going to give it to him for free. She liked him and she was going to spend her money. Mm. What did you think? So even in the situation where she was wealthy, he still went above and beyond to get Taylor Swift. Now, for the women that watch this show or for the women in the Normieville, even they are going to say, look, even he had to break bread. And she got her own money. Holy moly. Oh, boy. And the fact that she's old and, and uh, well, I was going to be mean. The fact that she's old <laughs> doesn't help the situation. This only helps the women believe that even with their own money, you still got to be out here spending on them lavishly. But that's what courting it. Well, I don't think what he's doing is courting, to be honest with you. But I think what he's doing is separating himself from the pack. Now, we have to understand, if he wants to marry her and he wants to marry a billionaire woman, he's got to separate himself from the pack. How does he do that? He has to say, I'll spare no expense. Something about what he's doing tells me he might be the one being predatory. He might be the one being predatory or he's looking out for his best interest because he does have options. That's the sad part of the conversation. People are going to say he's simping, but does he have options? Yes. Kayla Nicole will take him right now. And all these other black women will take him right now. So something, something is up in this situation here for men to understand. I think there's a combination of things. It ain't just simping, number one. I think he's protecting his ability to uh, support himself into the future. All right, because most of these NFL players go broke. I don't care how long they play, they go broke. Number two, he is also um, he's also possibly looking at maybe having kids with her. He might be more in love with her than she is with him. Number three, Taylor Swift is at the tail end of her fertility. She's looking to get some sperm. Straight jacket. So she can create another narrative for her princess story for her Taylor Swift fans. Her fans are worldwide. They comparing this woman to Michael Jackson for all, for goodness sake. Mm. So who better than ta- Travis Kelsey? Who better? She's like, mm, this is a good deal for me. Now, she wouldn't have done this at 26. She wouldn't have done this at 30. But at 34, she doing it. And that's you. And somebody said election year, a feel-good story. So this is going to be the story. They're going to be together all huddled up. We just start our family. We're getting engaged. Vote for Joe Biden. All right. Yep. Vote for Joe Biden. I've done some dumb things and I'll do dumb things again. All right. And so that's the situation here. Now, we know last part of this. We know that anybody that marries Taylor Swift is likely going to have to sign a mortgage package of prenuptial agreements and non-disclosure agreements. Anybody thinking Taylor Swift is going to waltz into this and be dumb like men are who are billionaires, well, she loves me. Taylor Swift and her people ain't going for it. She already got robbed once and robbed blind uh, by the record company, and then she tried to get out of that. So she already got robbed blind once. Don't think that she going to be stupid enough to make sure this ninja is going to get in and get out with a bag. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You think you think this woman's stupid? You got to understand her people and her lawyers. They ain't going to let that happen. They're just talking about 10% prenup. Nope, nope, nope. It ain't going to be none of that. He's still going to pay child support if they do break up. Yeah, they're going to find a way to make that ninja pay child support. He's going to have to pay to go see his kids. All right, so um, that's the only part of it is a lot of guys think that, yeah, he's going to get in and get out with a good prenuptial package. It'll be much better than he would have got going with Kayla Nicole for sure. Kayla Nicole package would have been whack. All right, there would have been no prenup package. But let's just say he's angling it for that and he's getting over on her. Ninjas be like, he pimping her. That's not what pimping is. Pimping would be putting her on the blade. 
All right, pimping would be putting Taylor Swift on the blade. He's not doing that. But he's securing his future by investing into her. I will agree with that. I will agree with that. Is it simping? Yes, unnecessary, but listen, I ain't Travis Kelsey. All right, so listen, it would be a little unnecessary, and it doesn't make for a good quality here. Like, it doesn't make for a good story for the rest of American men. Think about this. Taylor Swift audience is the majority of American women under the age of 30. Her impact is so big that they believe she can uh, convince a fifth of the voting populace to vote for whoever she endorses, which we know to be Joe Biden. But the rest of the American women are going to see themselves as Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is getting married to the man she wants at age 34 or 35, 36, and going to produce a child somewhere around 36, 37, 38, 39. And that's you. No bueno. She's going to influence the behavior of the majority of American women who believe that late 30s, going into your 40s, is the best time to select your partner. That's where you can put it in the simple category because now you've just, instead of having someone where you would think, oh, he could have some leverage, he took the not leverage route. In every way, this is no leverage. He came in and he had the money, but this is anti-leverage. But now the majority of Taylor Swift fans are going to probably say, hey, Taylor Swift got married at 35, had kids at 36, 39, and 40. And that's you. Now, I believe they all can do that. Yep. Especially young white women. But I don't know, young white women, are y'all listening? They don't have the fertility like that. Let me just show you real quick here. um, As I was going to share this later on. Let me see. They don't have the fertility like that. So that's where they got to be careful. They're actually, um, they're actually might prevent themselves from actually having children. Where's the story about, where's the story about in vitro for, let me see here. Was it Aaron Andrews? It was Aaron Andrews. Aaron Andrews, IVF. Aaron Andrews actually says she can't wait for Taylor Swift to get married. I don't know why they're interviewing these people here. All right, she just had, she just, Aaron Andrews apparently just had a baby. But uh, here it is right here, just so you can see it. She just had a baby. But it says right here, Aaron Andrews, after 10 years of hell, I became a mom. Now I'm trying to make up for lost time. 10 years of hell. What was the 10 years of hell? Oh, she had a baby by surrogate. So she didn't even deliver the baby. All right, this is what's happening. This was happening. So she went through 10 years of IVF and it was an L. It was an L. And they had to get a surrogate. Same thing as, um, what's that dude's name? Dwayne Wade. I think that Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, same, same. And she was older than him by 10 years, I believe. Let me see here. It says, we, uh, Aaron Andrews wants to change the way we talk about surrogacy. Of course. I mean, so this is the danger of it. The, the longer and longer people wait, the longer and longer the longer and longer it's going to, or the more and more it's going to cost you. Look, Erin Andrews spent her 20s and 30s building her career on the sidelines. Says, but she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. That's what caused it right here. And her, but that was 10 years into the IVF. And she had a retired hockey player right here. What followed was 10 years of fertility treatments, heartbreak and struggle, but the couple never lost hope. Says right here, two months ago, they uh, delivered a son named Matt via surrogacy. Uh, Cameron Diaz just had a baby at 51. All right. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm just going to guess that it was through surrogacy. All right. 51. So you see it right here. Cameron Diaz and Benji Madden welcomes baby boy. 51. Let me see if it, let me see if it was surrogate. I'm just going to assume it was surrogacy. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Pull it up. They announced the birth. Was she pregnant? They announced the birth. Did they announce the pregnancy though? Yeah, 51. Mother at 51. This is where we're going, guys. I showed you the video earlier about the American family. You're just having, and she ain't going to have any more. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know. 
So you only got your one baby. And at 51, let me see here. It was a surrogate. I can't find it. But I cannot find a picture of her pregnant. Oh, yeah, it was a surrogate. Yep, yeah, right there. This is their second child, though. Nope, first child. Yep, yeah, okay, let me read it. I'm going to read it. Cameron Diaz and Benji Madden are parents again. So this is the second baby right here. All right, welcome their second boy. We're blessed. He's awesome. Congratulations to them. Okay, right there. Uh, the first child was born in 2019 by surrogate. By surrogate. Reportedly after years of fertility treatment. I keep saying these things, man. I keep saying these things. Now, what does this mean to you? What does this mean to you? Wait a minute. Yeah. Who are you? What that mean? What does that mean to you guys? She also talked about having a child in, uh, later in life in her career. This is the thing. We're letting people go with this narrative. Hey, you can have babies at 51 and 40 and 45 and 30, 30 39. But now you're seeing that they're going through all of this long-term medical treatment, in, uh, in vitro fertilization. I gave you the calculation. You're talking about 60000 to to 100000 And if you got 10 years, you're talking about, you're talking about almost a million dollars. Talk about a million dollars. Both of the between both of these women, they probably spend a million dollars. Aaron Andrews and um Cameron Diaz. We're talking about probably a million dollars in IVF. Then, 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 then there was no idea IVF and then surrogate. All right. Now another woman's having the baby. <laughs> like just and then Cameron Diaz is 51. Come on, man. We talking about she's gonna be in her 70s by the time the kids cross graduation. 70. Okay, and this is the danger of this, okay, wait till late. So they always say wait till late. But I'm saying to you men, not let's take the women out of it because they're gonna they're gonna be pissy about it. Let them be pissy. I'm asking you men, do you want a surrogate? I would take a surrogate absent the mother. Okay, I would just pay for my own baby and leave the mother out of it because the mother is gonna steal the baby at some particular point. That's just what they do. They're gonna kidnap the baby and make you go through the courts. That's what they do. Okay, that's the majority of mothers at this at, in America. That's what they train to do. It's in their DNA. Let's talk about the men. Do you want to spend thousands on IVF? Do you want to spend thousands on surrogacy? Like, what are we doing? But this is what the promotion of this lifestyle happens. Let me do this. I'm going to play this right here. Okay, just so you see. This is why we need the immigrants because the immigrants are having babies in the fertility window. Are they babies they can afford? No, but they're doing it the nature's way, not through all of these playing God. They're using the hand of God for themselves. They're using their own hand as the hand of God. God didn't intend this, but now you're just going to force it to happen. And for what reasons? Selfish reasons, although most people have babies for selfish reasons anyway. But as you can see, the nuclear family, two men, I mean, a man and a woman, Four children, nuclear family. By the 1960s, you lost a child. Now the nuclear family is three. By the 70s, nuclear family is three. Then by the mid-80s, into the 80s, the nuclear family is two. And then now you're down to one. And then today, you got dinks. Dinks. You got people that are getting married for and no children and maybe a couple of dogs. Like, this is where we're going. This is why you need the immigrants in America. This is why they opening up the walls and letting everybody flood the gates. All right. And they're, they're, they're not going to do it with you Americans. They're going to do it with their own kind. All right. And of course, people will say, but the economy. Ninja, the middle was four children in the Great Depression living in one bedroom apartment. Right there. <laughs> four people in two beds. All right, yes, indeed. All right, um, that's the main event. I do have some overtime for you. If you enjoyed this clip, check me out on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel for the best morning live stream every weekday. And of course, we're back for the evening live streams as well. Check out the times in the feature channels on this channel right here. And also, the links are in the description box. I will see you there. New, 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 new world order.